the screen really is ubiquitous. There's no escape anywhere. Newport Transit Systems. Another victim of Amethyn. Poor guy's drugged out on Amethyn. They say the first motor function to suffer is always rhythm. Big sound from such a small box. The Roma Gallery. Maybe one day I'll have my own show here. Oh, sir. Sir! I'll just leave my ticket here then, shall I? Yes. Yes, I guess I'll do that. Neat. Slow day, I guess. It's a pointy-edged swan. There's absolutely nothing out there. Nothing. Oh, there's a city, an entire world even, but nothing. It's a short, nude creature with a snout. Very inspiring. For the life of me, I can't figure out why Cortez wants to meet me. Come to think of it, why do I want to meet him? About time you showed up. About time? I spent more than... Mira, this painting. Right here. Look. Why? Just look at it. It's nice work. It's very nice. But there's more to it than nice. Keep looking. What am I looking for? What do you see? I see a guy hugging a girl. And? They're probably boyfriend-girlfriend, and she's dumping him. He looks really depressed. Yes, yes. Forget the story. What do you see? I see an oil painting of two humans locked in an embrace. That's all you see? But there's so much more. Look. Look. I see a statement on loss. The guy, he's hugging a girl, and by all rights he should be happy, but he's not. He's probably already mourning the loss of her, even though that's still somewhere in his future. Statements? Who cares about statements? Tell me what you see. I see art. Art, yes. And beyond that, beyond art, Illusion. Skill and imagination allow the artist to create an illusion, but that is only skin deep. Beneath the illusion, what else is there? Truth? Truth. Exactly. A deeper truth. This painting, this particular work of art, speaks a deeper truth. It has a soul. How can a painting have a soul? It has a soul because it has an identity. It has a heart. The memory of this painting will survive beyond this moment. It will linger in your mind, become part of the tapestry of your subconscious. It has made a lasting impression on you. And you're not quite sure why. It's just a painting by some kid. It's not as if it's a Picasso or a Monet. 
Now you're arguing technique. Not every painting by Van Gogh or Michelangelo is real art either, although they all demonstrate great technique and, and craftsmanship. And the scribbled drawings of a five-year-old child are rarely technically impressive, but they may still have a soul. They may still be real art. So you're saying real art is not defined by the skill of the artist? Then what is art? If just anybody can create something more real than artists who spent their entire lives developing their skills? Art is still the work of artists. And skill, craftsmanship, technique, those things are critical to the success of an artist's work. But alone, those things are merely pretense. For something to be real, to be truthful, the artist must transfer, shift part of him or herself into the work to transcend the illusion and reach for the truth of art. And what is the truth of art? Who knows? I've been asking myself that question for years. Excuse me? You don't even know? And what's all this about all the questions and lectures on truth and delusion? For that matter, why did you ask me to come down here in the first place? Because... Actually, you didn't even ask me to come down. I spent my entire afternoon traveling all over Venice, deciphering a cryptic message, spending money I don't have on a subway ticket, only to have to stand here and listen to... to... You saw something this afternoon. A waking dream, and you can't explain it. That's why you are here, isn't it? How the hell do you know these things? It's as plain as the day, Senorita Ryan. You're under a lot of stress. My point about art and truth is this, April. Some things look real, but are not. And other things may appear to be of no consequence at all, but are in fact invaluable. Like Warren's painting here. And your dreams. There is both truth and illusion in dreams, and in the images they create. The problem is in sorting the one from the other. You're telling me my dreams are true? I'm telling you there are things afoot, and that you need help in sorting the truth from the illusions. My help. Well, that figures. Good. I was hoping you'd understand. No. Actually, I didn't understand a single word. You talk about art, and truth, and dreams, and illusions, and I still don't understand what it all has to do with me. There are things happening, yes, and I came here because I thought, maybe you're crazy enough to believe me, to help me, I don't know, sort through the debris and come up with the plausible explanation. But no, you tell me my dreams might be true, that I need your help, and that there are things afoot. I mean, who says afoot? I've never heard anybody use the word before. There are things afoot. Está bien. I understand your reluctance to believe me, senorita. But I cannot convince you here, now. Meet me tomorrow. What? Meet me tomorrow, and I will tell you everything. Not again. No way. But you will. Because you are compelled to do so by your own curiosity. Because you are drawn to mystery. And because despite your skepticism, you believe I have the answer to all your questions, yes? No. No, I don't care. I just want to have a normal life. No nightmares, no visions, no strangers telling me that things are afoot. Comprende, amigo? Ay, Dios mío. Is that the time? I've got to run, Senorita Ryan. I'll see you tomorrow, then. I said... Goodbye.
Hi, Charlie. What's up, April? I'll see you later, Charlie. Later. I'm all scrubbed and ready to work, sir. You'll be on the floor tonight, honey. Start taking orders.